Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was my 2023 game of the year, and is a game that honestly I'd put in like my top 5 all time. I thought it was an absolute masterpiece. It ended on such an interesting beat, too. The worlds of the first two games seemed to be saved, but there was a lot of openness and ambiguity there. How excited I was for the story DLC, touted to be the conclusion to this three-game series. And then how sad I was when I played it and found out that it is in fact a prequel, and not a continuation of the narrative. But you get to play Shulk and Rex, so it can't be all bad, right? You know what is all bad? Not liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, my disappointment with the narrative aside, Future Redeemed really is everything you could ask for in an expansion. 30 to 40 hours worth of additional gameplay, an entire huge new area to explore, improved and streamlined exploration and mechanics, and again, you get to play as Shulk and Rex. And Matthew, the grandson of N. The main party is for sure stacked here. Unfortunately though, I didn't feel like there was enough story to let you really feel the fact that you had these characters in your party. A lot of the time it felt like Rex and Shulk were just there. The overall narrative itself doesn't really feel that impactful either. I'm sure this is just because I haven't watched, you know, 50 hours worth of lore videos on the series, and I'm sure there's a lot of comments I'm going to get on this, but it really didn't feel like that much happened story-wise. And again, going into it, I think I had that thought that this was supposed to be the conclusion to the series, so it was very underwhelming. There is no continuation of the main game's ending. There's no closure on some of the things that it teased and some questions that it left unanswered. The expansion also doesn't have the same level of side quests that the base game had. Some of those hero quests were epic and emotional narratives. Hell, some were better than this expansion's entire story. And their absence is notable here. I get that this is DLC that was put together in about a year, and so I shouldn't expect the same level from these side quests when you look at the fact that the full game had like half a decade of development. It's just hard not to be at least a little disappointed when it feels like the base game set such a high bar. Gameplay itself is fairly unchanged, you've got two sets of abilities. Your party characters can pair up to do special attacks, and eventually you unleash a chain attack which clears out the second half of the boss's health bar. Normal enemies felt a lot less spongy than in the base game, which helped to encourage exploration of the new area. I would say the area in this game is about the quarter the size of the main games, give or take, and exploring it really is kind of the main draw of this expansion. Character progression is closely tied to exploration. You're given a bunch of items to check off the list, essentially collect this many of these things, kill this many of these monsters. And as you do that, you get points that you use to unlock abilities or stat boosts for your party characters. You also have to explore to find the items that let you unlock more gem or equipment slots or the next tier of abilities. This is very similar, I think, to Torna, which was the expansion for the second game. And it feels like it, again, is here to pad out the gameplay, because otherwise you'd only have a few hours of content if you just blast through the main story. Also, like Torna, it is fun to play the game and explore the areas, so you're kind of aware of what the game is doing and not too upset by it, if that makes sense. At the end of the day, Future Redeemed is more Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and I will never say that that's a bad thing. It builds upon the base game's near-perfect foundation, and while it isn't set after the game's ending, it is still awesome to see Shulk and Rex all grown up, the gameplay carries the weaker narrative, and the exploration incentives and checkpoints 
make sure that you're always getting something unlocked at a regular pace. And that keeps it engaging over its entire 30 to 40 hour runtime. It really does just fly by. For a final rating, I would give the story a 3 out of 5, the presentation a 4.5 out of 5, the gameplay a 5 out of 5, for an overall value of a 4 out of 5, and for value, I would say buy it if you played the base game. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, was the story actually awesome? Do I need to go watch 50 hours worth of Xenoblade lore videos? Link those in the comments and maybe I won't check them out. If you liked the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all with the next video.